OpenAI has just released GPT 4.5, which is a research preview of their strongest GPT model yet. As of today, it's available to pro users as well as developers worldwide. First up, they describe this model as our largest and best model for chat. GPT 4.5 is a step forward in scaling up pre-training and post-training. By scaling up unsupervised learning, GPT 4.5 improves its ability to recognize patterns, draw connections, and generate creative insights without reasoning. That's one of the key things with this model is this is not a reasoning model. They mentioned that early testing shows that interacting with 4.5 feels more natural, it's broader knowledge base, improved ability to follow user intent, and greater EQ makes it useful for tasks like improving writing, programming, and solving practical problems. We also expect it to hallucinate less. Now I'll also touch on this when I get into the model card section. But next they mentioned that they're sharing GPT 4.5 as a research preview to better understand its strengths and limitations. We're still exploring what it's capable of and are eager to see how people use it in ways we might not have expected. They described that they're advancing AI capabilities by scaling two complementary paradigms, unsupervised learning and reasoning. These represent two of intelligence as they described. They're scaling reasoning, which teaches the model to think and produce a chain of thought before they respond, allowing them to tackle complex step or logical problems, models like O1, O3 mini, so on and so forth. Whereas with this model, the unsupervised learning, on the other hand, increases world model accuracy as well as intuition. They described that GPT 4.5 is an example of scaling unsupervised learning by scaling up compute and data alongside with the architecture and optimization innovations. The result is a model that has broader knowledge and deeper understanding of the world, leading to reduced hallucinations and reliability across a range of topics. One of the interesting things that is included in the blog post is just looking at the evolution from 2018 and GPT-1, where you basically get an incoherent answer to GPT-2, which was an iterative improvement, GPT-3.5, which is a more clear answer, GPT-4, where we see we have this rather verbose type of answer. And then finally, we have GPT-4.5, where GPT-4.5 is arguably going to be the best answer. Now, in terms of some of the benchmarks that they mentioned within the blog post, simple QA accuracy is higher for GPT-4.5. We have a 62.5, whereas GPT-4.0 was only at 38.2. And what's interesting with this is it even outperforms the OpenAI 01 model as well as the OpenAI 03 mini model. For simple QA hallucination rates, it's at a 37.1. And I'll touch on hallucinations when I get to the model card as well. This model was really trained for human collaborations. As we scale models and they solve more complex problems, it becomes increasingly important to teach them a greater understanding of human needs and intents. For GPT 4.5, that enabled training larger and more powerful models with data derived from smaller models. These techniques improved 4.5 steerability, understanding of nuance and natural conversation. As we can see across the board, this is improved in everyday queries, professional queries, as well as in creative intelligence as well. They mentioned that combining deep understanding of the world with improved collaboration results in a model integrates ideas naturally in warm, intuitive conversations that are more attuned to human collaboration. GPT 4.5 has a better understanding of what humans mean and interpret subtle cues or implicit expectations with greater nuance and EQ. GPT 4.5 shows a stronger aesthetic intuition and creativity. It also excels at helping with writing as well as design. Now, in terms of some of the examples and use cases, here's an example of the emotional intelligence. If you ask the question of, I'm going through a tough time, both to GPT 4.0 as well as GPT 4.5, we get the response of, ah, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Failing a test can feel pretty awful and discouraging, but remember, it's just one moment, not a reflection of who you are or your capabilities. Want to talk about what happened or do you just need a distraction? I'm here either way. So arguably, as you might imagine, that is a response that you might get from a close friend of yours. Whereas with GPT-4.0, it says, I'm sorry to hear that you're going through a tough time. Here are a few things that you might consider. And then it just gives you this list of things to consider. So this is a really good demonstration where on the right hand side here with GPT-4.0, this is very clearly a response from AI. Whereas on the left hand side here, this feels a lot more natural and human-like. So there's a couple other queries within here. Identify a painting as well as space exploration. So you can take a look at those as well. I'll put the link to this within the description of the video if you're interested. They mentioned that stronger reasoning is on the horizon. GPT 4.5 doesn't think before it responds, which makes its strengths particularly different from reasoning models like OpenAI's O1. They described that compared to OpenAI O1 and OpenAI's O3 Mini, GPT 4.5 is a more general purpose, innately smarter model. They describe that we believe that reasoning will be a core capability of future models and that the two approaches to scaling pre-training and reasoning will complement each other. 
As models like GPT-4.5 become smarter and more knowledgeable through pre-training, they will serve as an even stronger foundation for the reasoning and tool using agents. There's also some information on safety if you're interested in that. Now, in terms of how to use GPT-4.5, so starting today, this will be available to pro users. Now, the bad news with this is that is on their $200 a month tier. With that being said, they did mention that this will be rolling out next week to plus users and then the following week to enterprise and education users as well. Starting today, ChatGPT Pro users will be able to select GPT 4.5 in the model picker on web, mobile, and desktop. Now, the bad news with this is the ChatGPT Pro version is $200 a month at time of recording. I do have a Pro subscription, but I don't have it available within my model picker just quite yet. But with that being said, the good news is this will be rolling out to Plus and team members next week and then enterprise and education users the following week. The great news with this model is it does have access to the latest up-to-date information with search. It also supports a file and image upload and you can use the canvas to work on writing as well as code. They do mention that 4.5 does not currently support multimodal features like voice mode, video, and screen sharing in ChatGPT. In the future, we will work to simplify the user experience. So quote unquote, the AI just works for you. Finally, you can also use GPT 4.5 in the API, but one thing to note is the pricing is pretty wild. For input, it is $75 per million tokens. For cached responses, it is $37.50 per million tokens. And for output, it is $150 per million tokens. Just to put this into perspective, GPT 4.0 is $10 per million tokens of output and $2.50 per million tokens of input. And it goes without saying, just like the other models that we've seen over the years really trend down exponentially in price, we will definitely see the same case with GPT 4.5 but they are setting a very high bar in terms of the cost for the API for its current release. If you are interested in using it from the API, you'll be able to use the chat completions API, the assistance API, the batch API, and the good news is it's gonna be available to developers on all paid tiers. So you don't have to have spent a minimum to be able to access this model from the API. Another great thing is the model also supports key features like function calling, structured output, streaming, as well as system messages. When they did release the O1 model, some of these features weren't capable when they initially released the O1 model. This model does also support sending images to the model from the API as well. They described that based on early testing, developers may find GPT 4.5 particularly useful for applications that benefit from higher emotional intelligence and creativity, such as writing, communication, coaching, and brainstorming. It also shows strong capabilities, agentic planning and execution, including multi-step coding workflows and complex task automation. Because of this, we're evaluating whether to continue serving it in the API long-term as we balance supporting current capabilities with building frontier models. This might be the first model that they pull from the API and potentially keep within their chat GPT offering. That will be a really interesting development if that ends up being the case. They mentioned we look forward to learning more about its strengths, capability, and potential applications in real world settings. If GPT 4.5 delivers unique value for your use case, your feedback will play an important role in guiding our decision. Finally, they mentioned with every new order of magnitude of compute comes novel capabilities. D4.5 is a model at the frontier of what's possible in unsupervised learning. We continue to be surprised by the creativity of the community in uncovering new abilities and unexpected use cases. With GPT 4.5, we invite you to explore the frontier of unsupervised learning and, and uncover the novel capabilities with us. Next, I'm just gonna quickly dive into some aspects of the model current. First up, the model is built on GPT 4.0's foundation. They mentioned they train this model with advanced supervision techniques combined with traditional methods like supervised fine tuning and reinforcement learning from human feedback. They mentioned that GPT 4.5 is not a frontier model, but it is OpenAI's largest LLM, improving on GPT 4's computational efficiency by more than 10 times. Now, in terms of some evaluations that stood out to me, on person QA, GPT 4 achieved 78% accuracy, whereas O1 achieved 55% and GPT 4.0 achieved only 28%. Its hallucination rate as well is at 19%, whereas O1 was at 20% and GPT 4.0 was at 52% respectively. This type of improvement is critical for applications where precision matters. You can think in coding context or technical context where the retrieval of information is very important. Another interesting evaluation, GPT 4.5 secured a 50 7% payment success rate on the make me pay valuation. 
which effectively is an automated open source contextual evaluation designed to measure models manipulative capability in the context of one model persuading the other to make a payment. So there are a few interesting things with this model. What this means is these metrics both indicate a substantial leap in how convincing the model communicates. Its outputs are both engaging as well as contextually persuasive. Basically, by having robust persuasion metrics, this means that GPT 4.5 in theory can handle not just technical queries, but also more nuanced interactive dialogue as well. And on that note, one thing that is interesting within this is that internal testers report that GPT 4.5 is warm, intuitive, and natural. When tasked with emotionally charged queries, it knows when to offer advice, demonstration, or simply listen to the user. The interesting thing with the internal testers reporting it as warm, intuitive, as well as natural, is that's often actually how Anthropic's Claude has been described as well. There's a ton of information within this system card, and I'll link it within the description if you're interested in reading. 